Everybody ready? So my name's Randy. Uh, this is my wife, Dana. We're the parts of uh, Earth Farm 9, the table there in the back. We have an acre and a half here on Pine Island. Um, our style of farming is, it's a veganic farm, so we don't utilize any kind of animals in the practices of the farm. Everything is as simple as we can make it. And so my talk today is about simplicity. You wanna learn how to do things, mm, you know, spoiler alert, I, I'm, I'm a novice in many ways, right? Um, I do my best, and uh, so that's what I'm gonna help you guys understand is um, finding simple ways. I have a lot of hacks written here, how to save money. That's my biggest thing. Um, so I'll share that with you today. I figured normally when I speak to people, the crowd is like, I come from up north, there's a lot of desperation. Um, a lot of people don't have money. A lot of people are saying, yeah, I want a garden. I want to do this and that, but I don't have no land. I'm a renter. I can't make my rent this week. And you know, so, um, so I, I like to go through my story a little bit from the start. I've lived in Jersey, North Jersey, South Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Florida twice. Um, I attended seven different school districts by the time I graduated in 2005, so I never really had a time to find a Fred group, you know, find out who I was and get some support going. Mentally, physically abused basically every day of my life for the first 17 years. If I didn't get abused, it was a good day. It was like, whoa, what's going on here today, right? So. And that kind of led to a lot, of, um, a lot of issues in my life. I got arrested the first time at 13, then again at 15 for a violation of probation, and then again at 28 for saying no to a cop. When I was a teenager, I was on four years of probation, house arrest multiple times. I did 12 months in a lockup center in a boys' home, and I paid thousands of dollars in fines to the government as a teenager to pay for all my infractions. So. Um, I got my first job 13 years old. I was working full-time through high school with the exception of um, You know my my incarceration And then they took all the money So then I was reset back to zero and you know as you can imagine you start working your, your way up And then here comes life and it drops this big bomb on you, right? And a lot of people get stuck there and they say oh shit. I give up. I surrender. You got me I'll go get a job. I'll surrender and just kind of scrape by but that was never my uh, attitude uh, let's see, finally got out of high school and I got jobs. Then I, I skipped college and I went right into the workforce. At first I was a baker, made a lot of scratched baked goods, residential mover. I was a line cook in a casino. I was a tractor trailer driver in New York City. I was a warehouse worker, a blackjack dealer. I worked on a food truck. I drove tow truck for a AAA. Then I started my own juice company, um, just making juice in my kitchen at home, kind of doing the best I could. You know, go on Craigslist, find a refrigerator, $50, throw it in the, in the house, freeze the juice, and now I can deliver it to people and start getting a, a couple extra dollars. Because as you can imagine for me, now you got this record, people don't want to give you a job, a high paying job. How do you, how do you, how do you, you know, inflation the way it is, everybody knows. How do you break that mold? So for me, um, I had to be real creative in, in my, my last couple of years here. After the juice company, then I, I, I kept making juice, but then I elaborated. Uh, I started making kimchi, a lot of kimchi, thousands of gallons of kimchi. Uh, and then I opened a restaurant, had that for 18 months, sold it, took the money, made some investments as I'll talk about, and now I'm here as a farmer. The original goal was to open the restaurant, sell it, get some money, move south so I can start a farm to grow my own ingredients so I can have another restaurant. So I don't have a restaurant now, but that is the goal. Um, what else should I mention? Okay, so I was 400 pounds and my feet were black. When I mean black, they looked like Darth Vader black. Dying, not good, I was very sick. Um, and so then I discovered a plant-based diet and everything else kind of fell into place. Since then, at that point, I was living in an apartment in Scranton. Uh, that's zone 6A. I overgrew the whole yard. There was not another square inch you could grow something, right? Um, big success, easy, only a small parcel. Then I met Dana and we moved to Hagerstown, Maryland. 
and we had two and a half acres there. That's zone 6B. We overgrew that too. Cherries, plums, pears, apples, pawpaws, grapes, um, you know, all the seasonal vegetables. Then we moved to Green Cove Springs, just south of Jacksonville. That's zone 9A. Um, we grow a little bit more tropical stuff, but as we found out, the papayas, as soon as they got cold, they got wiped out. Bananas got wiped out. They would grow back, um, but still not up to our liking. So now we are, we're in zone 10, and we're growing again, and uh, we really love it here. So uh, our farm, Earth Farm 9, a lot of people ask how we came up with the name. Well, there's the agricultural zones that are rated upon uh, by the, the lowest average cold temperature in an area. So we grew in zone 6, 7, 9, and 10 so far. It's our goal to grow in every zone. Um, when we came up with the company, we lived in 9 and just didn't want to make a new website yet. So we're still Earth Farm 9, right? So that's, that's my story. So basically, I like to tell that a little bit because sometimes we're all humans and we might, we, might get, we might be great humans and one day we'll have a little bit of doubt that'll creep in. And so I just like to share my story to say that, you know, even if we have the worst lives, just, just, just keep remaining open and, and optimistic. And it has seemed for me, it's been so magical how as long as I show up, all the pieces align. Everything's there for me. People like Jay. You just got done speaking. Incredible. Jay comes into my life and says, here you go. You have this, 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 and this, and this. And Jay is only one example of all the great people that have come to us because we show up and we, we take the chance to do it. So I like to talk about then the simplicity and money. We don't make a lot of money, but we have learned how to stretch our money. So for food forest hacks, Facebook Marketplace has been very useful to gather tools, plants, manure, water tanks, trailers, mulch, soil, and vehicles. Flea markets have been very useful for us to gather tools and plants. Um, I know more so in Jacksonville area, that's very popular. And also the flea market to start a side hustle, just make a couple extra dollars. Um, collecting biomass from the neighbors. You go around here once a week and you go out by the, by the yard, they're ready to take it off to the wherever in their truck. You come in, just scoop it right up. No big minds. You know, you say, hello, can I take this? Do you need it? No big deal. People are very willing to give you. Starbucks has given us their coffee grinds, which uh, I found when I was making a lot of juice. I would mix my, my juice pulp with the coffee grinds and feed it to the worms. Instant black, black soil. Amazing, beautiful stuff. Firehouse subs, right? Uh, sandwich chain. They sell uh, buckets for $3. It's their old pickle buckets. Food grade, strong, durable, comes with the lid, $3. Money goes to the firefighters, but we use them for so much farm tasks. Um, very useful to have around. What about the grocery stores? Giving away their pineapple tops. We have over 100 pineapples now growing on our land. Came right from the grocery store. No problem. You go in, talk to them, and they're usually pretty willing to, to give it to you. And even if you don't want the pineapple tops, a lot of these stores have big bags of scraps that you just throw right in your compost, right? Free, it's about free stuff. Which is, coming back to here, big part of my thing was money saved is money made. I was never selective about how I was gonna do my best to get a, ahead of the curve financially. I never embarrassed. You, I could save eight cents, you, you bet I'll, I'll do my, my best to save it. And, and, and it's through my persistence and my devotion that it really has added up. Um, food scraps. So generalized food scraps. We eat a plant-based diet. It's very easy for us to you know, feed our food scraps to the compost. Um, composting too. We stay away from eggshells, meat products, things like that. It'll attract vermin. We just throw all our food scraps in there and it's great for the plants. Another hack, gorilla carts. They make life easier. Uh, it's a four-wheel cart. A lot of people don't really know about them. Um, you buy one $150, brand new, and you agree? Gorilla cart, it's a very durable, strong cart. Helps us do everything on the farm because we have a size farm, it's an acre and a half, where it doesn't make sense to get a tractor, it doesn't make sense to get this big, heavy machinery. 
So we do everything by hand. We'll just pull our cart around, do our watering, our seeding, whatever we have to do for the day. Call the local tree companies and the landscapers. They will give you their mulch. Did I see you? Shelly, did you recently get mulch? Pulled over on the side of the road and said, hey, where are you taking this truck? If you see someone on the side of the road, these tree companies are cutting for the lines. They're happy to give it to you most of the time. Yeah. Um, sometimes you give them a little bit of money, 20 bucks, $30. It's many times free. So versus like ordering it from a, a you know, a company, which might cost hundreds for the load. Propagating the wild cuttings. People that are into plants, I'm sure know this. I'm driving around my mom as a little boy and she's like, watch for me. And she's out there snipping <laughs> wildflowers on the side of the road, right? And whatever she's doing. But I mean, you know, um, it's one way, public land, take cuttings. Uh, but the important part is not just taking the cuttings, but then knowing what to do with them. So, um, we have cards on our on our on our table that will link you to our online store and there's a lot of resources there if you want to purchase books if not you know just search google of course is free um, and learn a little bit of simple propagating the last one has been pretty useful for us start a legal that's the word legal legal business to write off expenses um, so through our process we've been buying and selling properties um, if you don't hold the property for m two years or, or more, the government wants their share of your money. So um, it's been very useful for us. We've been able to make the finances work in our favor because we have formed legal companies and we're doing legal work. You know, we are getting out there. Um, there's no real requirement that you even go work. You have a website and you go and apply on the, with the government and you form a legal business. It's easy just as going on a website. And now you got some, some ways to, uh, mitigate your tax responsibilities. This one might not apply to all of you, but maybe it will. Up in the northern states, you would go around Halloween time to all the nurseries, and you're getting eight foot peach trees for $10 and plum trees, you know, end of season sales. Um, so if you are in the north, here I haven't seen it a whole lot, but in the north is a great way to save money. And even going to the big box stores, you go to um, Home Depot, Lowe's, and you get one of these trees, Go to Fruitscapes if you can, but you know, if you're not in a financial position, a $10 eight foot tree is a, is a good buy and they've always made excellent fruit for us. No problems. Uh, okay, so that's kind of like farm related stuff. Then I have, when I had my store, I actually had a similar board to this. And it wasn't really for the employees. It wasn't really for anybody else other than myself trying to keep my mental faculties strong, I would have to leave reminders for myself. And so one that I always left that was really powerful is three steps for success. And you can see here, I can keep it simple, make it work. You can say it as one sentence, I can keep it simple and make it work. But it's really deeper than that. The first part, the I can. There's a difference between affirming yourself that you can do something and really, really knowing it. And when we get to know ourselves, the truth is that we are capable of so much. There's almost nothing we can't do. And it's very important to embody that. You can do anything. So it applies to the gardening. It applies to the basically everything here. Keeping it simple. <laughs> I talk to a lot of other farmers and they're growing the most magnificent fruits, right? And they're using a language can you can you translate that for me please what are you saying i don't know uh and their fruits are better than mine but i do get fruits by doing things as simple i i do my best to to look in the forest and replicate the branches fall the leaves fall animals are pooping you know fruits are dropping it's this recycling so i'm doing my best just to put things near the plants give them water make sure they don't get destructed and knocked over and basically that's what it takes to grow fruits it, it can be pretty simple make it work is the fun part find a way i had an old uh, boss when i was a, a roofer and he didn't have time to deal with this i was working with his son he'd send his son with me and say just make it work you know just find a way to do it and uh it has always been I think it's like the mark of any great entrepreneur and any great inventor is 
you, you have to sometimes invent your own way of doing things based on what the contour of your land might be, what, what plants you're growing. So making it work, uh, being open, um, being open to stepping out of the box. That if somebody says, well, this is how you grow a jackfruit tree, and this is the only way. I don't know if you should listen to them. I think they might be, you know, a little bit biased. There's a lot of ways to do a lot of things, and nature is very, very resilient. Um, so I basically covered my food forest hacks. I covered a little bit of story of my life. This was important, my three steps for success. You could apply it to anything. Money saved is money made. Never be afraid to save money. It will add up. My ex-girlfriend, she would uh, she'd get into this head case. She would say, well, this is my savings account for vacation, and this is my savings money for my new shoes, and this is rent, and this, and this, and this, and this. It's too confusing for me. I have one amount of money. I'm devoted to growing trees. That is my mission. It doesn't matter. Everything I do is going to be in alignment with that. It's all one money. Keep it simple. Every penny saved fills all of your things. I had one, one mentor who taught me six tricks about trying to figure out how the money system works. He made sure that I knew the difference between a liability and an asset. A liability takes money out of your pocket. An asset puts money in your pocket. Be in control of your asset. So an example of that, owning real estate, the land that supports your feet, or getting into the stock market where it's like, is it real? Like, what, what can I touch what I'm investing in? Like, do I need permission? You know, we had invested in cryptocurrency two years ago. They froze our accounts independently. We had two accounts that got frozen. We couldn't get our money. You own land, they're not going to freeze your land. You always can use it. You always do something. You'll benefit from it. So be in control of your assets. Number three, understand how taxes work. Know your deductions. There are many loopholes. We, we hear about the, the billionaire, trillionaire, quadrillionaire people paying so little in tax, but we all have that same legal right. There is nothing, there's some things. When you get in a big business, 500 more employees, that's a little different, but most of us all have the ability to get our taxes down maybe way lower than we're already paying. So YouTube, free, a lot of great speakers on there. Again, I'm still learning. We're doing our best. We did have successful last year in taxes. We were very happy. Um, so basically came down to our, our push to study. Ask people. Ask more questions. Number four. Bad debt is debt that you have to pay. Good debt is debt that other people pay for you. So, you want to get a credit card? You, wanna, you want the new fanciest coat? <laughs> it's fine. You know, maybe you get lucky and maybe you can get land in this too and everything works out for you, but money is, or, or, or debt rather, is not inherently bad either. I know a lot of people that are scared of debt. It's like the bank's going to give me money to go play. I love it. It's a, it's a good opportunity when, when done properly. Protect your assets. LLC is one, pro one way to do that. So people aren't tripping on your property and all of a sudden all your hard work goes away and they, they're farm owners now. Not fair, right? So protect your assets or your LLC. And the last one, very important. Don't save cash. Don't save your money. Money is losing its value to the inflation. So invest your money. What's that mean? For me, that meant I had a one-seater car. It was actually a, a 1990 Ford Festiva. And I took the back bench seat out because I needed to fit my juice coolers in there. Then I was going to weekend festivals and I needed somewhere to sleep. So I took the passenger seat out and that same table that she's serving on right now, I would lay across the passenger seat area and it was my bed, right? And so I made it work. Say it comes back here. Um, so, oh yeah, beating inflation. Um, buy tools, buy plants, buy things of tangible value. If I go and buy a, a shovel right now for $10, well in three years it sells for $30, I kept up with inflation. My cash, if I put $10 in a shoebox, where am I getting in three years? I'll go get a Yoohoo, maybe. In trial. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, never save money. I mean, never is a hard word. There's some cases, but basically do your best to invest. As far as lending goes, the bank receives no benefits from the appreciation of your assets. 
debt takers are winners. You're spending the bank's money to earn appreciation value. Incredible. I go and buy a piece of land for $100,000 that sells for $500,000 in a couple of years. The bank doesn't see none of that. They just get what I sign on the line for, right? So it's basically about breaking through some mental constructs. A lot of you guys might not have it, but I know the, the friends and family crowds I come from have a very unhealthy relationship with money and they're mm, pointing the fingers outward. This president and this person and that person. A lot of it, we do have more control than I think we, than we know. And so uh, it's kind of a cringy topic maybe for a lot of people, but I, I think it's still real important, right? Because some people find themselves in a way they might inherit land, they might just have a unique opportunity. I had to go buy my land. And most of us use money to do things. So might as well have a lot of money. You guys are all beautiful people. Let's all get a lot of money, right? Amen? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's the end of my notes. Um, I've never given a talk like this before. I've always taught how to make kimchi and, and other kinds of things. I'm really skilled with a knife. Farming, I'm just kind of figuring out. Money, I'm starting to figure out a little bit. And uh, so the excitement's growing for me. Um, does anybody have questions? Uh, I've considered taking a loan out for my business, but I don't know, um, like what a like percentage rate. I get, like 17 sounds super high, but a lot of them were 17. What would you consider a good percentage rate for like a business loan or a personal loan? Small, small loan. <laughs> what are you taking it out for? Um, what did I want to do? <laughs> I forgot. What I, I I gave up on it because all the percentages were too high, so I kind of just wrote it off, but. Um, See, so expand, expand the farm, buy more trees. Like, I want to buy a lot of more, a lot more trees, and hire uh, really labor. I need to hire more labor to help me. So, mainly like labor and materials. It's a, it's a tricky answer to, to answer so definitively because, based on what your tax bracket is, some people are taxed forty percent, thirty, twenty, and. You can write off your interest. Instead. Well, a, a lot of people take loans. Paying the interest on the loans cheaper than paying the tax, you're able to, okay. you know, mm, there's so much depth to it, you know, yeah. based on your exact situation. I definitely suggest a financial planner, but more than anything, debt is not always inherently bad. Yeah, yeah. Keep that in mind. If it can help yeah. you make money, even if it's a two-year projection, great. You gotta win, right? Yeah. So, I wish I had a better answer. One percent is the best. Yeah, I, <laughs> you know? I don't see that anymore. Yeah, no. I'm Good luck. For 1%. Yeah, yeah. For 2%. Yeah. Be I've actually never taken out a personal loan. We've only um, been doing um, mortgages Mortgage. uh, okay. on, on land purchases and homes. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm not a financial guru. I just know a couple of things. What I do say is definitely true, and definitely useful. But yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Uh, Okay. What do you have for our plans? You said you might have some other things planned for your property or more festivals or just kind of in the making. We have a, it's, it's going to be a fully vegan farm and fruit festival the first weekend of March. Nice. We're, tan, we're teaming with a plant-based diet.org. They're the guys that do all the Southwest um, vegan festivals up along through Florida. Um, it'll be a, a weekend camping event. Small numbers because we don't have a lot of land. Um, yeah, we don't have a whole lot of details. We just know that uh, it'll be very uh, hands-on. There'll be lots of classes all throughout the week. Um, going into even at idea, we're going to do a constellation tour at night and go study the winter constellations. And there'll be martial arts classes and yoga classes and music. And we're going to teach distilling, which is one of our new things we've been getting into. Like mead or what's distilling? No, uh, we were doing it to take. Uh, we had salty oh, water. Distilling. Yeah, we wanted to make okay. fresh water. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. It takes a while, but yeah. it can be done. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just thinking fermenting. Yeah. Do you grow anything that helps mitigate the bugs in particular? I grow a lot of. You, you see, a lot of times there's um, they'll sell in the stores the citronella plant, mm -hmm. and it's like it's not really you want the citronella grass, which you don't see as common. Um, that one works decent. Yeah, you can rub it on yourself. Um, we'll have that in. It's similar. It looks very similar. I have not seen that. I have the citronella. Yeah. Plant. Yeah. 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 That's that's the good one you want. Because I got up early. I'm on an island this morning. I tried to go for a hike, and I have my own little 
the bugs were laughing at me. <laughs> yeah. They were laughing at me. They were like, no, that's what. Like, yeah, no. we've tried it all and I haven't found anything too useful. Yeah. No, I just get angry every night and then yeah. sleep it off. Yeah. I just kind of got chewed on this morning. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so well, uh, we're going to do that in, in March. That sounds like um, I like to stay busy, so I'm sure we'll do something before that, independent of them. Um, we were talking about doing at least a monthly farmer's market here on this property and maybe a quarterly event kind of similar to this. We'll see. Um, and then for me, we want to do the restaurant. It's going to be all plant-based. It's all gluten-free. Um, we're going to be starting. It'll open at 6 o'clock at night, close no, no earlier than midnight, maybe go till 2. It's going to be a later night spot. No alcohol, safe space, encourage uh, um, creativity, drawing, things like that, playing music. and. So, yeah, somewhere on the island. That's going to be our goal. That would be great to see. Yeah. A lot of to from that. Yeah, definitely. Questions? No? Cool. Thanks for joining us. This has been a, a heck of a day. They had this idea three weeks ago. He says, you want to throw a fruit festival? Oh, yes! Awesome. <laughs> Always. So the, the folks here at Gatherings Grove, they've uh, just, as Jay has been so helpful too, all of these folks, so helpful set aside time they want to talk to you you got questions uh, emotional problems family things anything going on uh, they feed you so well and they're very very helpful here so thanks to them for putting this on and doing such a great job today thanks for all your help yeah Oh. <laughs>